I'm Greg Zanis, inventor of DreamCar123.com. I'd like to talk to you about how we're planning to get the wedges from Earth to outer space and then how we're planning to land them back on other planets again. And if you remember here, we were building the wedges in this painting. So the very first thing we did was we poured the wedges and we popped them out. Now this particular planet is Mars, but just say it was Earth or any other planet, we'll start a production line where we'll start popping these wedges out. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to start pulling these wedges out into outer space and building our buildings. Now, before we do that, we have to have buildings on Earth, already built. Now here's a 33-story building looking on the inside, and what you'll see in there are the wedges, the wedges here at the top. If you take a look here, you'll see the same building, and the wedges are at the top. Here they are, and we're going to start taking those apart first. Now this is an overview of all of the wedges that it takes to build the pyramid project. Of course, there's the elevator shaft, the, the, the uh, H unit, the I and the J, and the A and the K, and the B units. Now all of these units build the pyramid building. Now we're going to talk about once the building is built on Earth, we're going to start taking it apart, literally taking it apart, starting at the very top up here. We're going to take these wedges and we're going to start popping them out into outer space and we're going to start building the top of this building. Now we're going to build it backwards in outer space. So we're going to start from the top, building it, and going down. Now I'd like to show you again the bungee cord system that will be pretty much built with a, with a fiber of spiders. And this is a very, very strong cable. And what you see here is a building fully assembled on Earth, and we're starting to take the top layers off of the building. And if you notice here, it's very small, but when it gets all the way back around here, the building is four times bigger. It's getting bigger and bigger. But you see here a wedge at the very bottom of the building. If you notice here, a painting number 14, you'll see this is a completed building, and these are completed buildings. But you'll notice here the tops are slowly becoming missing because they're, we're bungeeing them out to outer space. This top has about six stories missing. This top has about 14 stories missing. This top, top has about 18 stories missing. And this building has almost 25 stories missing because, like I said, we're taking them and we're moving them out here. But what we're also doing is once we get to another planet, and this planet is Mars, we're going to start doing just the opposite. We're going to start taking the building apart from the bottom, and we're going to land the bottom onto the planet, and we're going to start lowering these wedges down one at a time, and we're going to start building the very, the base of the building first, and slowly we're going to be building up the first floor, second floor, third floor, and 10th floor, 15th floor, 20th floor, and we're actually transferring the entire building right back down to the surface of the planet that we've chosen. Now, along with that, it's a lot more complicated because this painting has not got any of the dream car or the dream car tunnels in place yet. And we're going to explain to you how those are prefab too. If you take a look here, real close, you'll notice that these are missing teeth and or missing units because we're building them here. Now you can look at this both ways. You can also look at it as we're lowering these units back down to a surface, except that this is the factory surface. I just wanted to give you a little insight on what it's like to build in outer space. We're actually building the buildings on Earth. Then we're going to bungee them into an orbit around our Earth. And then we're going to send those units to the next planet, which would be the Moon. 
And once we get to the moon, we're going to make four buildings flying around the moon. And once we get those built, then we're going to actually start lowering those buildings down to the surface of the moon. And then we're going to replace the existing four that are orbiting around the moon with four new buildings. And this is a continual building process. And once we get a few buildings on the moon, four say, and we get four flying around the moon, then we're going to go to our next objective, which the next closest planet is Mars. And we're going to send over there, we're going to send a building, and then we're going to send three more buildings. And then once we get those there, we're going to start taking those buildings apart again and start lowering those to the surface of Mars. And this will go further and further. Then we'll, we'll pick up Venus and we'll start building on Venus. We may never land on Venus. We may never land on Mercury. And once we get those built, then we're gonna then we're gonna send our buildings to the farthest reach of our solar system to start circling around Pluto. I understand Pluto has three moons around it now, so we do know that we can orbit Pluto. And once we get a very, very large building around Pluto, and we've got all of these other buildings built. We have a huge light beam aiming in Pluto. So far away, that's pretty dark out there and it's pretty cold out there. And after that, like I said, we're going to start sending our buildings to Orion and to other star networks. And what, once they start going out there, like I said, it may take one to two to three to five to ten years. And once we reach another star, and like I showed you before in the Big Dipper, we may never actually land on the Big Dipper, but we may just go into orbit around the next star. And once we're at that star, then it's really called a sun. And I'd like to tell you more in up and coming videos, but also you can find photographs of all of these paintings and all of these models on our webpage. And, it, and we would love, of course, for you to subscribe as we start talking to you more and more about what this project is about. It's a very exciting project. We, we really don't believe that anybody is really talking about going to other star systems. We know that it can never be done with rocket fuel. And the only real way to do it is with this entire project. And like I said, that this project is a very Noah's Ark type of community. What I would like to point out again is we're taking along all of our uh, plant life. Plant life offers us food, but it also offers us, offers us oxygen. We're also taking along all of the necessary meat that we're going to need to eat. And we're also considering this a new type of Noah's Ark community. That we're going to take everything along with us that it's going to take to to build a new world. We may never find another Earth, and we could search for a hundred years, but you know, that's nothing compared to how long ago, for example, the original pyramids were built. They were built thousands and thousands of years ago. If we have a few thousand years to go to find other stars, we're gonna find a planet that we're gonna find suitable for us. And I'm Greg Zanis, inventor of DreamCar123.com. And like I asked before, please subscribe to our videos. 